They're not sound on the who plays the rhythm warriors. No, oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> just me, just me. Um, so, um, have we got a bit of time? I don't know if anyone's got any personal questions, not too personal for Mike, but uh, if you've read the book, if anyone's got to anything they'd like to ask or not. Does it matter if you've not? No, I'm yeah, not. Yeah. Mike, what do you think, you know, you know, you and I talk a lot, so you know I'm very much uh, um, in line, I suppose, with, with thinking um, uh, by it immensely, uh, and also the book itself, which I think is Jesuit Science. Is a brilliant uh, set of tools really for, for, for life. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Are, what do you think the barriers are that stop people grasping everything? What are the What are the things that that stop us from? I think I think for me the biggest barriers um, ultimately really to learning is what we're talking about. Um, is fear. Of failure. Uh, fear of failure. I think fear of failure are, are really, really significant barriers to all of us. Fear of looking a bit silly. Fear of being ridiculed. Fear of uh, not meeting the mark. And I think, you know, it links to links to this idea of, you know, we, we, we've called this organisation here Childs, um, and, and part of it was it was just a nice and neat little acronym that linked to Children Institute of Learning, Development and Sport, but in a roundabout way, you know, what happens to us, when are we at our most curious and our most creative, is when we're seven, eight years old. That's when we're at our most curious and creative because, you know, we don't give a monkeys about what other people think. We're not trying to reach some sort of, you know, goal or some sort of, we're just at our most curious, at our most playful, uh, at our most creative. And then what happens over the next years, we become a bit more adult, oh, that wouldn't look so good, or, oh, I don't want to stand out from the crowd too much, or, oh, and suddenly we put on this, this, these layers of armour to protect ourselves, and we become a little bit cynical, and we stop trying, and we stop, you know, yet, there are wonderful examples in our sport, and here in our, at our tennis club, we've got a guy who was playing a, a tournament here over the weekend, 84 years old. 84 years old and he's out playing and he's out learning and he's out wanting to get better. Um, and because he's decided to choose his attitude around fear. And I think fear is, is for me, is, is our biggest obstacle in, in any of these things. And most of the time it's completely irrational fear. Most of the time. I don't know if that's... Oh, yeah, well, I agree with you, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just interested to, to, to get you to explain it a bit more because I guess part of the process is to help people overcome that fear, as needed to, and to, to differentiate between rational and irrational fear because it's perfectly rational to be scared of, um, you know, when your kids get out on the road to sort of tell them to not do that. Yeah. So most of it, of course, is made up, isn't it? And, and the difficulty yeah. is, the, the problem is that we make things up. Absolutely. We tend to make negative things out, don't we? And especially, you know, youngsters coming through sort of high school age, mm. you know, there is a, there's a very, very strong desire and need to, to fit in. Yeah. Right? And, and so therefore here we have a, a bit of an expression in the saying around fitting in because you work so hard. Yeah. Fitting in because you are curious. Fitting in because you want to learn. And standing out because perhaps you're not there to work hard. And it's just flipping the, flipping, you know, looking at the other side of the coin. And um, uh, yeah, so I think I think uh, a lot we can learn. Um, I follow it on, Mike, with the growth mindset. Obviously, it's, it's also a big thing in schools. I work in education, and so I'd be really interested in how, you know, I'm using analogy as teachers. How do you work with coaches to really do you overtly coach? 
how to become more of a growth mindset person rather than fixed? Yeah. Yeah. What sort of practical strategies yeah. do you advocate? Absolutely, and I think I think the growth mindset. Those of you who've worked and, and studied a little bit of Carol's work, there's a, there's a growth mindset that our abilities are not fixed, right? That our abilities with effort and work and practice, we can we can change our intellect, we can change our skill levels, um, and and we're always growing, always learning, always developing, rather than the fixed mindset that says actually this is your intelligence, this is your talent level, this is what you've got. So you better have a healthy dose of it because you're going to spend your whole life trying to prove it. And in terms of, I think that's really, really closely linked to how we develop um, what I would call intrinsic motivation. So there's how, we're, how we motivate ourselves or how we're motivated in life can be intrinsic, internal, and can be extrinsic, external. So I'm motivated... Externally, by reward, by finances perhaps, by um, extrinsic carrot and stick perhaps approach. As opposed to developing intrinsically motivated youngsters. And I think you can perhaps just distill that down into um, three things. I mean, you can think of AMP, AMP, okay? Autonomy, mastery and purpose. And if we can coach in such a way that actually develops autonomy, right, by actually, rather than saying, do this, do that, by actually asking the question and being able to um, give, give choice, because choice always invites what? It invites a decision. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if we can actually offer choice when we're coaching or working with people, Choice invites decision. Decision encourages ownership. Yeah? I've made a choice, therefore I've got ownership now over that choice. Ownership then okay, encourages responsibility. So that, that A in, in kind of intrinsic motivation, that autonomy, I, have, I, am, I am becoming more and more the captain of my own ship. Right? As opposed to do this, do that. Okay, when could you go to bed tonight, Alfie? You know, what do you think? You've got, you've got a couple of choices. Nine or ten o'clock, yeah? So you're going to go for ten o'clock, but at least you've made the decision that you're going to bed at ten o'clock tonight. Okay, and that ten o'clock decision, okay, now you're going to have to be responsible for it. It's, it's a bit different if mum's just said, right, Alfie, it's ten o'clock tonight, thirty tonight, lights out. Yeah? Okay. So that idea of autonomy and encouraging that, and then mastery. I had this. Um, are we doing for time? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, this wonderful experience. I was watching um, skateboarders skating at. Um, we were in London for for the day last summer, and uh, and we saw these skaters, and they were in a skate park, and they were just practicing, and they were just obsessed with actually mastering their sport. There wasn't a tournament, there wasn't a match, they, they were just obsessed around mastery and, 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 and took such delight in mastering something that really, really mattered to them. And I think that's the M. Um, can we encourage kids just to, and people just to master something that's really important to them? And then finally, this idea of um, purpose, about being involved in something that's bigger than perhaps just our egocentric selves. So how are we contributing to um, the, the, the sport of skateboarding yeah, by, by mastering these sports? Or are we part of a bigger organisation? Are we part of a, a club here? Or are we part of something that, that actually has a much greater sense of um, uh, the common good or ourselves rather than purely um, something around our egocentric selves? So AMP, I guess AM is where I'm going, autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Invite choice. The minute we start to invite choice, we start to encourage the growth mindset you know, by asking good, smart questions. Cool. Um, so let's finish on one question. So we've been on the internet for a while, Steve's done a great job. So we've had a, a certain question from email through, from Mr. Jay Corby. And it says, background growth. And it says, as you assume to be a best-selling author on Amazon, 
have you got any offshore bank accounts that you'd like to get in there for your own tax purposes? I'll be enough, Jess. I'll be enough. No. It's on camera. Okay, well, thank you guys for coming. Thanks to Mike for sharing quite a lot of quite the deep personal insights into kind of how we should grow um, with our own lives and with our children's lives. Thanks again. And um, please, please, please um, get a signed book tonight or get, make sure you pre, uh, pre order one on Amazon. And once you've read the book from the 5th of May, I think we can review it, I think, um, give it five stars. Thank you. Thank you.